Hey there, in today's video, I'm gonna go through running shoe details, my likes and yes, my dislikes. I'm making this video because last week I made a video giving an overview of all my different running shoes. And I wanted to go through some of the individual details on particular shoes that I like and I dislike. And I've, I've broken the uh, shoes down into components like heel, tongue, all that sort of stuff to try and, and group the components and, and make it easier, I suppose, to, to discuss them. And uh, they're some of the things that I like, but it'd be great to hear what you like. So pop something into the comments and we could always discuss shoe details. On their website, Nike break down running shoes into 23 individual components. I've made it a little bit tighter, only 12, but I've added another three categories of my own at the end. And we'll start with the top of the shoe and we work our way down. This video might be long, so as always, there are chapter markers down below so you can skip on through the bits you might be interested in. Let's get going. My favorite type of opening on a shoe is a booty construction, a looped area around your foot. You can see it here on the Cloud Ultra. It's very common on trail shoes because it's much easier to stop things falling through onto your, into your socks and under your foot. Um, a simple round opening, I like this one. It's also though on racing shoes. So this is the uh, Nike Alpha Fly. The Alpha Fly 2 is the same sort of opening. And this takes a little bit of time to get on, hence there's a heel tab, which got even bigger on the, the Alpha Fly 2 takes a bit of time to get on. If you're going for a run, even a short run, that wouldn't bother me. It takes a bit of resting to get on, but once it's on, I find it nice and snug. My other favorite opening of all these shoes is the Nike Street Fly. So this is a traditional opening. The tongue uh, goes up and you can get in really easy onto this shoe. It goes up at, uh, well, 90 degrees at a fairly big opening. So yeah, I, I, my favorite opening is booty, but if not, the Nike Street Fly. Many years ago, I remember a lot of discussion about uh, heels on shoes and not coming too high up your Achilles and sometimes having a notch around your Achilles. And uh, clearly your Achilles won't have changed that much in that many years, but the shoe designs seem to have evolved. But this is the Asics Metaspeed Sky Plus, one of my favorite marathon running shoes. And it just has a really simple heel. It's just a simple padded collar around the edge, which is in contact with your foot for Asics's a uh, long, easy day shoe, it's a much heavier structure. It's much more built up to protect you more. I mean, at the end of the Berlin Marathon, I wasn't particularly bothered. I wasn't beat up as it happened running in these, but I would have certainly accepted it for a quicker time. And uh, whereas a long, easy day shoe like the Gel Nimbus 25 has a huge amount of padding. I mean, it's really padded around the heel, really nice. And I really like the design detail of how the edging around the collar flows up and is tucked back in. In terms of other typical heels, this is the Vaporfly. And what I've noticed a lot of shoes is there's this sort of edge here at the collar, but that the padding is a minimal amount inside down the bottom. The heel on this doesn't bother me too much, but it's, uh, I really like the one on the street fly is the same idea. There's a uh, little bit of padding inside, but one of the things that's nice here is the heel tab pops up and then you can put it on and then fold it down. I don't know if I ever bother when I'm doing it, um, but it also has a nice little checkered flag detail on the back. So yeah, this would be, um, I quite like this as a lightweight one. I really like that. And as a more durable one, this one, get my vote. I have lots of shoes with lots of different lacing patterns, but none really beats this, the, uh, the Atreyu base model, the battle lies within. This one here is just simple holes and a simple piece of uh, lace or string to tie the two sides together. It works perfectly well for me, but on running have, I suspect, a complete department about this. This is the Cloud Stratus, the present model. Again, it's got something really complicated down the front on love complicated lacing. It's sort of pull, something is pulling at these two points in the shoe. And then this bit actually works. There's a sort of, um, it's, it's also, this detail appears on the Adidas Adistar. There's a, uh, a, a piece along with some, some sort of uh, lacelets to get, to allow the laces to be pulled through. And then as you tighten it, both sides pr provide even pressure across the forefoot. So this one actually does work. It's a change over the earlier Cloud Stratus has the same uh, star pattern down, down there, but didn't have that sort of bridging piece. It actually works quite well, even again, for me, it's a bit overcomplicated. Um, this is the North Face Vective. It has, we'll go through laces next, but it has a, a particular flat lace, and it has a whole load of little slots very closely together. So it takes a long time to put this shoe on. I know it's designed to be 
very difficult to come loose on long trails, but it also means it's very difficult to tighten up. Personally, I prefer something that's easy to tie up, and if you want it, easy to loosen up. But that's that's another method that people use. The um, the two shoes, the Nike ones that I've I've uh, I've always I've complained about this shoe all the time in terms of its upper. But it has those uh, laces. I'll go through those next laces. But it's got little slots, and again, this is the Vaporfly Three. It's hard to pull this through tight, and I guess it's the idea is to to make it uh, hard to then loosen. But Nike use on the Street Fly an almost identical pattern. But they've got these little loops here. The the laces are thin, very easy to put this shoe on. And once the laces are tied on tight, you know they don't come loose for me. It's a really easy system to use. If I was in a race and I wanted to loosen the shoe, this one would be the easiest one to do it in. These little eyelets, they're also used on, uh, or eyelet loops, they're also used on the Gel Nimbus 25, and another shoe that's very easy to lace up and lace down. So there's loads of different methodologies for lacing, but really, yeah, nothing beats this one for me. When it comes to laces, I'm quite happy with simple laces, as in the Atreo base model, the Battle Lies Within colorway, particularly in this bright yellow. There's nothing complicated. These are regular, as regular laces as you could get, and they work perfectly fine for me. Same happens in the uh, Asics Metaspeed Sky. These have, again, it's very simple, almost like string laces. Um, these sometimes might not up. I think that might have been one of the criticisms. It doesn't bother me. If I'm running a marathon, they didn't come undone, and I've run two marathons in this particular shoe, so they didn't become undone. But Asics did use and introduce the same sort of uh, serrated edge that there's on uh, lots of the Nike laces on the Vaporfly 3s and certainly on the Alphafly 1 and Alphafly 2. Um, and they sort of lock together a bit more. They sort of, I suppose, this. Um, when you're pulling against each other, they, they have a bit more grip. Same is true in this. This is the, the Vective. They're flat, the North Face Vective, flat with some little uh, ridges in it. I find this shoe very hard to tighten on and conversely, I suppose, very hard to loosen up. And in both instances, it kind of annoys me. There's a couple of other ones. That, there's Nike. This one I really do like, the Street Fly, where you've got thin laces. They're really thin, lightweight, um, but they pull through easy both locking and unlocking or untying and tying up the shoe. The same is true of, of the on running on the Cloud Boom Echo. I, these are probably the lightest laces I have. They really are lightweight. But again, I ran a marathon in this shoe without any bother with the laces. On running also on their trail shoes, do a lot of thin laces. Here they are on the Cloud Ultra in the laces garage. So I suppose I'm not that fussy about laces. These are the Ultra Vanish Carbons. They use something similar to the uh, Vective by North Face. The one thing, funny enough, on this shoe, they don't have two eyelets for being able to heel lock, which is something that I tried. I don't use it myself, but I did try it recently on the Invincible just to make the, the heel a bit tighter. One thing I always do, and I've been doing this for years, um, I had a problem with shoelaces coming undone in my Carbon X's. And so there's a sort of method where you tie it. It's slightly a reverse loop. It might be a reef knot, I'm not sure a bit, but uh, there's a, this guy on YouTube, Professor Shoelace, <laughs> he makes it. Seriously, he makes all sorts of things about different ways of lacing, but I don't have huge issues with lacing. Nice, simple laces that are easy to pull through will do me just grand. There are many people for whom tying shoelace is difficult, and this week I found it particularly difficult as I have a very tight psoas muscle, uh, appropriately named muscle that has been killing me for the last uh, week or two. I think it's on the mend, but I've been walking around a huge amount of time in the Nike flyies. It is supremely easy to get on and off. And I don't need to tighten when I do. You you can press down on this thing to loosen it. Um, you pull on this to, to tighten and you pull on this to, to release the thing. It, it works really well. It also, I'd only tighten when I was running. If you're walking, you don't need to. But uh, yeah, this is, I, I mean, I commend Nike for some innovation in providing a shoe that you know, people who might find it difficult, maybe all the time, or someone like me, some of the time, it is a, a really good, uh, much as I like the simple tie system on the Atreyu, there are times when this is the only thing that will work. And it's, uh, yeah, Nike, chapeau for that one. Tongues, shoes of a variety of tongues. Obviously the booty construction shoes don't have a tongue or it's, it's inbuilt, but some of the ones on the table here, if you like a padded tongue, these are my old Brooks Transcend 7s. Uh, nice color as it happens, but very padded tongue. This was a very nice padded 
plush shoe. As it happens, I don't really need a very plush tongue. Here, this is one I didn't like at all. This is the Hoka Clifton Edge, a shoe I do like for reasons that I'll come on to. But I, it, had a, it has a tongue with a sort of hard edge on it. Um, and it cut me the first time I went out in low socks, cut me, I could still see the blood around the opening of the shoe. Really, <laughs> this tongue got, came in for some harsh criticism. Fine, once you've run it a few times, you, uh, you'll build up the scars or whatever, but or your legs get tougher. But yeah, not a tongue I liked on this. They improved it massively though. I mean, I don't think they watched my video and decided to just realize themselves. Um, this is the Carbon X2 and uh, the plastic that's on, on that, the Clifton Edge, is uh, in the sandwich in between is a little bit of, it looks like Alcantara, feels like Alcantara. And this was very soft where it met your foot. And then this has a little slot here, which turned out to be really good for expanding as your foot. As the tongue wraps around your foot, it takes in different sizes. I thought that was a really good idea. You see a, something similar, you see it on the, this is the Ultra Vanish Carbon. It goes, I suppose, two steps further. Now it's got two of them, uh, one either side, uh, uh, a nice tongue on this shoe but it fall it's it's a, a very lightweight material and i wish they had sewn it along a bit more because it takes me ages because it rolls in on itself it takes me ages to put this shoe on once it's on it's very good but it's it's um i imagine they'll solve that in the next version but it's still a, a really good shoe um nike then in terms of this the streak fly this one has a little slot here this fits really nice against my foot Again, to beat up on the Vaporfly um, 3s. I, I can never get the tongue on the Vaporfly 3 to sit where it's supposed to sit. It always sort of skews out in a piece hanging out. Again, I'll show a detail. So uh, again, I don't know why that is. It doesn't stop being a really fast shoe. Um, my favorite uh, upper and tongue is this on the On Running Cloud Neo. It's really soft. It's just a, a really soft piece of fabric. Feels beautiful against the foot. Yeah, I really like this. And uh, very similar idea in this. This is the Gel Nimbus 25. And again, another very soft piece, probably slightly thicker than the on running. It's, it's uh, yeah, very soft, very nice against the uh, foot. But one of my favorite in a, in a running shoe, again, uh, the A6 Metaspeed Sky. It's a very nice piece of what feels like Alcantara. It's just really lightweight, lots of holes in it for ventilation. And again, nothing over complicated. I, I don't think you need to over complicate the tongue in the shoe, but yeah. The uh, Mesby Sky Plus has uh, a really nice lightweight one. In terms of the toe box, I like it to be nice and wide for a couple of reasons. One is so I can splay my toes out. I know these aren't my toes, but split, being able to splay out uh, really works for me. But also I like a bit of wriggle room, a bit of expansion room. The best one for that in one way is the Ultra. It's got a very nice wide toe box for me. Um, the material isn't very stretchy. That's the only thing. I like a little bit of give in the material, but yeah, a wide toe box like the Altus is really good. Um, I also like, if it's a trail shoe, a bit of protection. So this is the Nike Wild Horse 7. So there's a bit of additional protection around here if your feet are going against rocks. It's one of the reasons why I don't think this, the Atreyu base trail is really, why I call it a road trail shoe, is because there's very little protection here. So I find this more suitable on roads or very light trails, as much as I like the shoe. Um, I do like at the toe, if it's a trail shoe, a bit of additional protection. In terms of liners, most of my uh, racing shoes don't have a removable liner. And it's the same with my tray shoes where the liner, I think it's five mil, is taken in tandem with the midsole and they're both considered as to acting together. Most other shoes, easy day shoes, have removable liners of various sorts. The most interesting is the Seam Alpe 864 pair of shoes that were sent to me. And um, you can take out the different liners to give you different heel to toe drops. Here they are, the eight, the six, and the four. And um, they're also quite substantially made. And I've taken those out sometimes from this shoe and popped them into other shoes to see what would happen. And uh, I do like the fact there are removal liners in most of my shoes. If you take the Brooks Hyperion Max, it's got a really thin, this really, really thin liner. It's a kind of paper thin, really. And uh, this is the liner from the uh, Asics Gel Nimbus 25, much more substantial, befitting the kind of shoe you'd, ex I suppose you'd expect a long, easy day, comfortable shoe to have a thicker, um, more absorbent liner. But again, a lot of people will put orthotics in. I don't, but uh, yeah, you might. The midsole is critical to the performance of the running shoes. Most use various types of foams, of which my favorite is Nike's Zoom X, a form of 
Pbax in this particular instance it's just a large slab of it shaped in a particular way but a large slab of it it's um, combined with a carbon plate in the Vaporfly 3s and the carbon plate adds a bit of extra performance a bit of extra energy return they also then in Nike with the um, Alphafly 2s or an Alphafly as well they put in these pods which um, on the marathon I can't get any use out of but they try various things but that is my favorite type of foam Nike also they have a react foam in various ones of their shoes this is the uh, Wild Horse 7 and I like the shoe but the foam isn't as uh, I don't like it as much as the Zoomex the uh, this is the Endorphin Pro 3 by Saucony which again has a carbon plate and their version of uh, Pbax which is the Power Run foam and uh, I like it in this shoe this shoe I'm not so uh, keen on in terms of it wavers a bit when I'm, I'm running but I'm looking forward to trying the same foam in a different shoe I also this is a shoe that I really do like this is night this is sorry Brooks uh, Hyperion tempo and this uses I think they call it a DNA flash nitrogen infused foam and I find that really good on running with their midsoles have this running on clouds and they use large holes in the in the base of the shoe to create the feeling of softness I don't think it works that very well and I think on running will probably move away from that I prefer foam with some nice holes in it that's already in this one as they call it nitrogen infused so the gas has has spread that around I think that's actually a better solution but again here's another type of foam this one has great graphene in it or graphene to be extremely strong this is the Innovate uh, G300 a really strong hard wearing shoe a lot of the the P-backs and certainly this is not my uh, this is the Invincible 3 but my Invincible 1's the foam goes down really quickly in terms of all of my shoes it's the midsole that runs out maybe the outsole as well long before any of the upper gives way in terms of the outsole, what I wanted to do most is to protect the midsole. This is the A6 Metaspeed Sky after 300 kilometers, and um, it wears very badly at the back. I know it'll vary from person to person, but there's very little and very thin outsole. So it wears down really quickly, and therefore the very soft foam gets attacked. If I compare it to my most durable shoe, this is the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. It, you know, I've, I've worn it down again. These are 300 kilometers in them. Uh, give or take uh, one or two kilometers um i stop at that with these kind of shoes just for testing purposes but re really it's it's uh, it's lasted really well this is the best outsole of any shoe that i haven't and the, the upper the rest of the upper the uppers on all my shoes wear really well some other things with outsoles that i find and, and i sort of certainly midsole here is holes that slots that take up gravel that happened in this particular the vaporfly threes happens on a lot of on shoes not really a problem but if I was running a marathon which I am planning to do with some gravel on it, it might cause me some uh, pause for thought the other thing with uh, the outsole or the sole in general is the one on this shoe I really like this is the Clifton Edge by Hoka I don't think they've made a second version of it I think it was one and done but it's huge it has a huge outsole and, uh, and sole in, in general and for me what was great about that was I like to run at night and I sometimes run on trails at night and I don't like to use a head torch. I like to use the, the moonlight. My eyes adjust. It's something I really, really enjoy. These would be on, on, on trails nearby that I, I know very well. But this with its big wide sole was great for spreading the load on uneven tra trails, particularly when maybe, you know, there might be a stone or something in the way. So yeah, this I I would I'd really like to replace this I brought another version out, which I would buy it immediately. With outsoles, it's not just how much of it there is, but how it's designed and the materials it's made out of. So this, the North Face Vective, the material, I think they call it Control V or something like that, um, is outstanding. I found the, the grip from those outstanding. I did try, <laughs> I did, I've been trying to uh, measure grip accurately. It's really, it's really hard to do. I've spent a lot of time thinking about different machines we could make in the university and uh, yeah, an ongoing project, let's put it that way. But if you compared, say, the Vective with this, the uh, Kraft Tailored Motion CTM Ultra Carbon, and I prefer this as a shoe. I, the downside of this shoe is it looks like it would have great grip. You look and you think, wow, look at those, there's lots of lugs. Um, but it's terrible in the wet on uh, tarmac. It would be fine on trails, which is primarily what it's designed for. But um, whatever material is on the bottom of that shoe, it's like glass. 
it's not as bad as glass, but it, it, it's, it's pretty tricky in the wet. I, I would not advise running in the wet. So yeah, the material as well as the log pattern uh, matters. Logs, you want logs? Well, welcome to the Innovate G300. They have some amazing uh, logs on the outsole. It is, uh, yeah, it's got very good grip and it's got very good durability. And overall it has, it, it's got a great outsole. Yeah, it's you pay for that in, in the weight, but running on trails, if you want wet, rocky, muddy, gravelly, this is gonna be the one for you or for me. Now for three categories that really interest me, may not interest you in the slightest, but branding. So can you beat Nike? Uh, <laughs> well, they've got the most recognizable running shoe logo anywhere. And on this particular shoe, the launch edition of the Vaporfly 3, I think it looks fantastic the way it comes from the uh, midsole all, all the way through. Nice, simple branding. I've seen the prototype for the Alpha Fly 3, which I do hope to get, has something similar. So, yeah, Nike, well done on your swoosh. I, I, I like, if you look at this shoe, somebody looking at this shoe who, who knew a little bit about the shoe would know the country in which I bought this shoe. And so they'd also know the country in which I didn't buy this shoe. And <laughs> they would know that because they're both on shoes. And as somebody watched this channel pointed out, when you get a shoe in Switzerland by On Running, it doesn't have a little Swiss flag on it. I bought these in Zurich, the Cloud Monsters. Whereas these I bought here, or well, online, and they have the little Swiss flag and little Swiss engineering, which I really like. <laughs> Just it's just something I am nerdy when it comes to that kind of stuff. But yeah, I like those kind of little design and brandy details. And yeah, I will admit to wandering around Zurich, looking at people's feet, thinking, hmm, they were overseas when they bought those shoes. <laughs> okay, let's go on to colorways. The colorways of shoes are really important to me. This is my favorite. The battle lies within colorway of the Atreyu base model. I could look at this shoe all day. I like the, I love the bright yellow of the laces. I love the simple Atreyu logo. The lettering is really simple, but applied in a kind of gold finish. And when you flip it around, there's the battle lies within, it looks like it's been written with a Sharpie in sort of just handwritten text. And the battle always does live it in for me anyway. It's on my head versus my, my body and vice versa. And uh, I, I really like that on a shoe. I like when I'm putting that shoe on, it reminds me of that. So one of the reasons why I always run in that shoe when I'm feeling feeling good. It's uh, something I like in shoes generally. I like uh, on running produce an awful lot of colorways. I like this. I really liked in one of the early versions of the Cloud Stratus. On don't I think they've started now, but originally they just, they just replaced one with the same name. Now I think they've got versions two, three, and four or whatever. But this is one of the earlier versions and um, I really liked this colorway. I also like the fact the N on one and the O on the other. And I like these, the little eyelet has the sort of on symbol, the O on one side, not the other. So yeah, this is a colorway I really like. Um, but my favorite, I suppose, of my high performance shoes, I, this is the Asics. Metaspeed Sky Plus in its launch color. It's amazing poppy green. And the same was true of the previous one. And I'm trying to watch uh, running on TV all the time, see who's wearing what. And today I watched the Manchester run and I couldn't, there's six guys running in Nikes. And it was really hard to tell what they were running in. Every time someone is running in this shoe, you can see it. It, it jumps out at you. I think it's really well done. I think Nike are really missing a trick on that. Um, I know that so many athletes are wearing Nike things, but today, until the end, and even then, you know, people aren't focusing, the cameraman isn't focusing on people's shoes. It was really hard to tell. I think someone was in an Alpha 3 prototype. Maybe, uh, uh, I was trying to see whether, whether, someone, whether anybody in this 10K was wearing Street Fly. And I'm pretty sure they weren't, but I couldn't say for certain. And I think that is a trick that Nike are missing with the colorways that Asics get right. They nail it at least in the last two versions of the Metaspeeds. My favorite category, aesthetics. So we look at a couple of different brands and their aesthetics. This is, well, I wonder if you know what it is. <laughs> this is uh, Brooks, obviously, and it's the Transcend 7. And I keep thinking, Brooks, they just keep churning out this shoe over and over again as an adrenaline or as a ghost or a glycerin. They, there's a certain laziness in the Brooks uh, design department 
very hard to tell the different Brooks shoes apart. I know they're making lots of them, but yeah, I always think there's, there's a lot of laziness going on in that department. Whereas when you go to Nike, and I know the budgets might be bigger, but you know, <laughs> there's nothing else on the market that looks like this shoe or actually performs like this shoe. And yeah, I've had a sore back and yeah, I've got to like it even more this week. But yeah, this is aesthetically, I really like the look of it, but functionally, it's a really brilliant idea. I look at this shoe and I think, what is going on? This is a North Place Vective. It looks like someone had random fabrics and threw them together. And one minute there's curves, then there's straight lines. And, and I get it that they're just trying to use the reinforcement things. And then there's very ugly symbol, badly placed. The new version is a lot nicer than this, but this is probably the ugliest shoe I've ever bought. With I, I sit there thinking, you know, did they have a plan or did they just let the materials fall on the wherever they did. Anyway, we'll we'll ignore this one. We'll go on to Asics. Uh, this is the Gel Nibs 25 yet again. Uh, it's a shoe I like. It's a shoe I really like. I like looking at the, the, the shoe apart from anything else. And Asics used to have that, I call it my Skittles in a bucket of sick aesthetic um, that they've simplified down, thank goodness. And uh, this is, and actually the Metaspeed Sky or Metaspeed range, the edge is the same. The, this is actually, their, all of their shoes are getting better looking, shall we say. When I put all of those things together, this is the one that wins it for me on running. They make great colorways. I think the colorways I really like in on shoes are often in the women's shoes. And if they were available in a size that would fit me, I would buy them. I just love the colorways, but there's lots of really good colorways in the men's. The branding is super. I love particularly on this, the uh, Cloud Boom Echo, the big O. I love the O in the end picked out in the tongue. I love the Swiss flag and the Swiss engineering. Uh, I like the visible technology. I think the, the clouds are moving away from. I was watching Helen Obery win again in these shoes. She won the Boston Marathon, and, sorry, the latest version of these shoes, where they're moving away from the cloud. I think there'll be more P back sense for them, sort of smaller clouds. Let's put it that way. And um, yeah, there's. It, I, I like to think that one of the reasons they've gone from zero to a billion dollar company in a very short period of time is the design. My, my day job is as head of design at Technological. University of Dublin. I, I mean, I joke with people that I'm head of colouring in, <laughs> which I like to think about, but it, it, there's more to it than that. And I do like to think that the more to it than that is what has taken uh, on running from a, a, a huge concentration on design details has taken them from zero to a billion dollars in not a very long period of time. So yeah, God is in the details as lots of designers say. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it would be great if you hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of information in the description below and I'll happily answer any question you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there. That's the videos. There. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.